Hello everyone, I'm Keely and this is Voice of a Creative and today I'm here to answer your questions about Jersey. So I put a call out on the community page on YouTube and on Instagram to get some questions about sewing with Jersey and things related with that and I am going to try and answer those questions in this video. I have been sewing with Jersey for I think about 8 to 10 years now, I can't remember the exact time but I sort of discovered Jersey, I bought some online on eBay first of all and then from there I made a self-drafted pattern, as you know that's developed into my self-drafted dress and basically I love sewing with Jersey. The bright colours, the comfort, the stretch of the fabric, it's slightly more easy to fit and I couldn't imagine uh, sewing just with woven fabrics. So if you haven't had a chance to sew with Jersey yet, I would definitely recommend it and you will not look back. A lot of people say it's a little bit more difficult to sew with Jersey. I didn't find that first of all. It was just as difficult as woven, you know, you learn the techniques to deal with the different things. So I've been sewing with Jersey a long time. Any tips that I give in this video are based on my experience. So I've got no formal education in sewing. I'm entirely self-taught apart from my GCSE textiles. And so what I've learned about Jersey is literally from sewing with Jersey. So this might not be, I might not be recommending things that other sewing patterns recommend or books recommend or professionals recommend, but this is what I've learned based on what I've done with Jersey so far. So I have written out the questions on my little notebook here. So this is the so much to do, so little time, little notepad from Pink Coat Club. It comes in pink and blue. I went for the blue one. And I will link these down below because they are really cute. I've used up a few pages, but just look at that little penguin. <laughs> uh, so I will link these down below so you can go and check those out if you would like to buy a little sewing notepad. And I've got a range of different things next to me to kind of show, to illustrate points and I might adjust the camera angle to show different things as well. It's going to be a bit of a bitty video because there's lots of questions and obviously I want to try and answer them all. I will be doing videos coming up after this specifically about different types of jersey, so cotton jersey, viscose jersey, French terry and sweatshirting. And in those videos I will be showing you my stash so fabrics that I've got and where I got them from, garments I've made with that fabric and the kind of finishing and patterns that I like to use with that fabric. So before I get onto the questions, I'm just gonna go through a few basics. Now, a little bit of time ago, Shona from Sewers Faction did a Jersey Tips video. So I will link that down below so you can go and check that out because that was full of really good tips for sewing with Jersey. And if you're just starting out, that might be a really good place to start as well. A book which is really helpful is this one. So this is the Tilly and the Button stretch book. There is lots of amazing information, even some new things that I learned from this book when I got it. And there are also patterns that you can practice with. And I've made a few patterns from the book. So the Frankie T and Freya top from here, or Freya sweater from here. And that's really good. There's a lot of information. So I will link this down below as well if you want to learn more about stretch fabrics and Tilly and the Buttons, really comprehensive instructions. So it's gonna really help you. If you're looking to sew your first jersey project, I would recommend you choose a cotton jersey. Now these are available from basically any fabric retailer. You can type it in online and loads of cotton jerseys will come up. I would suggest that your first project in Jersey be a t-shirt probably. Now you will have a few tricky things there because you'll have a neckband and potentially that's something that you wouldn't have dealt with before but actually it comes together fairly easily and it should fit you. So you'll have a really good positive experience first time. And I would actually really recommend the Plantain Tea by Deer and Doe. This is a free pattern, it's a PDF on their website and it's a really good starting one. The instructions are clear, the neckband goes in easily, and I think it works really well for cotton jersey. So try that one out if that's gonna be your first project. So some basics first of all. If you are sewn with jersey, you will want to use a stretch or ballpoint needle. I actually much prefer ballpoint needles, so these. 
So I've got size 70 and size 80. Size 70 I would use on lighter weight jerseys, so viscose jerseys and very fine cotton jerseys. Sometimes cotton jersey, to be honest, I don't take much notice of what needle is in the machine, what size anyway, I make sure it's a ballpoint. Now the difference with a ballpoint needle is that it's slightly rounded at the tip rather than being really sharp, and that's going to move the knit fibres out of the way instead of piercing through them. So that's going to really help you not have skipped stitches. The size 80 I would use for French terries and sweatshirt fabrics as well. The other thing you want to do is make sure that you use polyester thread. So if you use a cotton thread, that won't stretch at all. And so when you're moving about, you're more likely to have your thread snapping. With this, this is polyester thread. I like to use Gutterman thread, which is slightly more expensive, but my machine much prefers it. And also the quality of my sewing is much better with the Gutterman thread for my top stitching and things like that. I have found that I've had less broken stitches in the future after making the garment. And it also comes in a huge range of colours and you can often colour match when you buy your fabric. So Goodman Thread. So now onto the questions. Now, if you do have a question that I don't answer in this video, please still comment it down below because I can always answer it in a future video. Or if you are having a specific Jersey project problem, please feel free to message me on Instagram and I will try my best to help you. Okay, I'm gonna highlight the questions as I go along so that I know that I've answered them. So the first one, and this is from Instagram, so 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 mad, so so mad, who has just got a new YouTube channel, so I will link that down below. I watched her first video and it was really lovely to see her makes, so I will link that. So 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 mad, how do you finish at the end of overlocking? So overlocking, obviously on the sewing machine, you kind of knot your thread by either pressing the knot button, if you have that, or sewing backwards and forwards to knot your threads at the beginning. Now with an overlocker, you don't have that ability to do that. So it depends on what seam you're working on. Now, if you've got a seam that is going to be stitched over by something, so for example, a sleeve, you will stitch it on, and then it's likely that you will sew down the side seam and those threads will be secured at the side. So there, I literally do that. I would sew it on the overlocker as normal, and then I will sew down the side seam and that will secure the overlock threads in place. The only time that I will do anything to secure the overlock threads is when I'm sewing in the round or a hem or at the edge of something. So if I do that, I sew in the round and I overlap the threads from the beginning. And then I go on to my normal sewing machine and I just do a couple of stitches back and forth over those end threads where the two overlock threads overlap and that will secure it. Now, I don't know if that's the proper way to secure it. I haven't been on any overlocker courses. I've only had my overlocker for a year, so I'm still learning, but as yet, my overlocker threads have not come undone. So what I would recommend is, if you've got a bit where they overlap, literally go on your sewing machine and just finish them off. There are methods where you kind of draw the end tail of the overlocker in. I just cut it off and then stitch over it to secure it. So next, Heather Soul makes, why bother with a neckband would a uh, one centimeter hem suffice? Really interesting question. When I first got started with sewing with jersey, I did not know about neckbands. So I kind of made up how I sewed with jersey. And I was like, well, you could just fold it over, it's fine. And actually with structured jerseys, it is fine. I've got two garments here. I, they're both my self-drafted dresses because this is where I've got the most examples of. One has a double folded neckline, one has a neckband. What I would say is the reason people do neckbands is to keep the neckline from stretching out. So what you're worried about when you're pulling something on and off your head, obviously the neckline might start to become stretched out. And actually a neckband really helps support that in your garment, especially with looser kind of weave knits and really stretchy or fine knits, you're gonna find that they stretch out a lot more. So I didn't originally do this with my viscose jersey dresses and I've got one which has a neckline which is stretched, stretched way out and it's really low now. And I still wear it, but I wish I'd used a neckband to finish the edge. So I would definitely recommend if you are using viscose jersey 
to prevent it from stretching or a lighter weight jersey like the bamboo knits and things like that you will likely want to use a neckband now that doesn't have to be ugly i actually think a neckband pr provides a really lovely finish some people don't prefer that in some knit patterns they use facings which i really can't i don't like knit facings i can't deal with it so the other method that I use, and I will show you how to do this, is to literally fold over the edge and then fold it over again. So what you can't do, and I have tried this, is overlock the edge, say, and then just fold it over once. Because what I've always found is it like flicks out again. I don't know what it is, but it flicks out again. So what I've done with this one is I've folded it over a centimetre and then folded it over a centimetre again and then that and then top stitched around the outside edge and because this fabric is quite a drapey but it's still a cotton jersey maybe a little bit of polyester that neckline has not stretched out the one that this works best in is with cotton jersey you can see I folded it over there and it just is finished really nicely. So I think the kind of answer to that question is, think about your garment, what works best. A lot of t-shirts do have neck bands. The other thing is to think about adding a jersey binding, which is not necessarily something I do, but I know I just watched the Rio t-shirt sew along by True Bias, and she has a really comprehensive guide of how to do that. So maybe head over and watch that. I will link that down below so you can have a look, it's on Instagram but I either choose a neckband or double fold over one centimetre. I have got a question later on, which I will show you how to do that. I just want to do the questions in order, so it's easy. Okay, Joyce Freshleaf, what can you do with small scraps? Now, this is a question that I am still debating because with cotton scraps, you, make, you can make quilts, you can make scrappy quilts, you can make loads of different projects. With jersey scraps, it's a lot more difficult to use them for those types of things. So I'm gonna show you an example of some things that I have made. Uh, not necessarily the best way to use scraps, but it's just a way I found of using some of them up. So the first thing I started to make with jersey scraps is scrunchies. Now, I followed the cut one pair tutorial for this, and you just have a long thin piece of fabric put the elastic in, stitch it together, and I've made quite a few of them out of my different jersey fabrics. And I have also given them away to friends and family, and they work really well. So that was a really nice project to do. The next thing is to make makeup wipes or makeup pads. This is what the, these are. Now, I haven't been that successful with these, mainly because I used white cotton jersey on one side and then just other cotton jersey on the other side to give it a pattern. And I just overlocked round and then stitched over the edge here. Now, you can see, I don't know if you'll be able to see, uh, this white cotton jersey, it stains with makeup. And obviously, it's going to, I use oil-based like makeup and it's going to stain. So mine look a bit dirty, even though these are freshly washed. So I'd potentially recommend using like a darker jersey or get one of the, like a toweling type thing to go on the other side. But I have used these and I have given them to family and they have worked quite well. Uh, so that again, you only need a little one. I like the circle and I just overlocked around the outside edge and it managed to get it into like the rhythm of it and do that really neatly. And it wasn't too much to just stitch over the edge here at the end. The next idea that I'm about to do, but I haven't started yet, is I'm going to make a tailor's ham. So I'm gonna make it out of fabric and then I'm gonna use the really tiny bits of uh, fabric that you get from like the cutting off the overlocker as well as the threads from the overlocker and things like that and I'm going to stuff them inside so that'll be a way to use up so I'm going to make a tailor's ham and then the longer thin one is it a tailor's sausage I don't know but I'm going to make those and I think that there is a tutorial for how to make the tailor's ham on the Tilly and the Buttons website so I'm going to make one of those because I haven't got one and I'd like to make one another thing you could do with them is save them up and then use them to make test versions of bodices. So this is a test version of the Georgie dress and I had enough fabric to do kind of the back and sleeves and front with that and then the other panels out of this other one. So 
test versions of garments. You could obviously save things for like neckbands and things and I do um, make t-shirts where the front of the t-shirt is one fabric and the back is another fabric. For example this one here, the patterned fabric at the front and the sleeves will be this fabric and then at the back I've just got a plain cotton jersey and that way you can use up a square piece to do your front but then you've got a different colour at the back and actually it still works together as a t-shirt so it's just an easy way to use up the final bits. So the next question from Sewing L Plates, how do you keep your top stitching neat? Now this I think is something that comes more with experience and all I can say is you need to work out where on the plate, where on your foot on the sewing machine you need to look and then keep the edge of your fabric lined up with that point Put some tape there if it's easier and keep your eye lined up with where you need to keep that fabric and then I use my hands like this to hold the fabric and just keep it in position. I didn't used to sew so neatly, I used to just blag it through the machine but I do take a lot of time to get my top stitch in neat now and I think it's just a case of picking a point, making sure your fabric lines up with that and then literally sewing slowly and making sure it lines up all the way through. So the next one is about finishing seams with jersey. Do I serge or overlock before the pieces are sewn together or once they're sewn together? Now with jersey you could, if you wanted to, just sew straight on the overlocker. So what you can do is just sew the two pieces together and finish the seams that way. I would not overlock a piece before it's sewn together with jersey because it's likely to stretch and fold the edge slightly and that's going to be a bit of a struggle. When you sew kind of one layer on the overlocker it is a little bit more tricky than sewing the two layers together because it's designed to sew two layers together. So what I would suggest for finishing seams with the overlocker like I've done here is literally the two pieces together and then I've stitched along the edge. So I'm sewing the garment and overlocking as I go. So if you're doing the shoulder seams, I sew them on the machine, I trim and then overlock. I trim it because my overlocker doesn't cut anymore because I've broken the blade. Uh, but you could just sew it straight onto the overlocker. Then you'll add your sleeves in, say, overlock, then the next stage. So I do that as I go to finish it. That's what they do on uh, ready to wear garments as well so that's why I do that. So the next question is about sewing with a machine rather than an overlocker. Now I up until a year ago when I got my overlocker I sewed all my jersey on my machine and it was my older Toyota machine and I used a walking foot for that and then the ballpoint needles and that seemed to work really well to drag it through and that machine had really good pressure so it meant it didn't stretch it out. With my new machine, which is the Janome Atelier 6, I've had to play about with the settings a little bit to get it to be right. The walking foot isn't really needed. The pressure from the foot and the feed dogs is e e easily goes through. But I have had a little bit of problem with the foot pressure, so I've had to play about with that a little bit. But that's fine, I've got that all sorted now, which I'm really pleased with. But if you are sewing jersey on a sewing machine, they suggest that you use the lightning stitch if you have that. I've not ever used that, but you know, that's what people suggest. I used to use this, so, oh, it's gone a bit rolly. There we go. So this is the three-step zigzag. So most machines should have it. My old machine was an entry-level machine and it had it. So it's a three-step and it's just like stitch, 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 zigzag, stitch, stitch, stitch. And I felt that that worked really well and it made my makes really durable. So I was really happy with that. People do so with a normal zigzag stitch. The reason I didn't is because I, no matter how many times I played about with it on that machine, my zigzag stitch would not hold and would not lie flat and was really irritating. So I would recommend maybe trying the lightning stitch, but the three step zigzag really worked well for me. So definitely try that. Getting an overlocker really did change the quality of my garments. So definitely if you're in a position to be able to, or it's something you can work to save towards, or you're sewing jersey loads and loads, I would really recommend getting an overlocker. The one I've got is the Brother Lock 2104D. And I will link that down below super easy to thread. 
like literally no problems threading it and I have said my blade is broken but that was totally down to me I sewed through a pin thought I could replace the blade myself and you can't so now it's broken but it still sews so I'm just trimming by hand and sewing okay the next question from YouTube was about hemming jersey now I do this two different ways one I do a double folded hem and two, I overlock the edge and then just fold it up once, but doing a lot deeper hem. So this is a cotton jersey that I got from Minerva Crafts. And to finish the edge of this, I overlock, first of all, fold it up. I think this is a centimetre and a half. So I fold it up centimetre and a half. And then I did two rows of straight stitching on top. And yes, I did say straight stitching. Uh, I sew with a straight stitch on to hem them. I don't use a lightning stitch or a zigzag stitch. I just use a larger stitch width. So a four, a size four or a five on my machine. And I just sew round and I've maybe had a hem pop like once. I haven't ever had a problem with it. So what I do is just stitch around with a normal straight stitch. Make sure I've got my ballpoint needle, my polyester thread. I ease it through the machine. It's it's fine and I just use a larger stitch width and I've literally never had a problem but I wear things that aren't stretching too much apart from like the Freya t-shirt that's a that stretches a little bit but it's, it's, it's fine <laughs> so that's one way so overlocking the edge or finishing your edge if you want to you don't have to finish the edge and then stitching with a straight stitch round the other way is to do a double fold so this is a double fold now i would say that this works a lot better on finer jerseys if you do it with cotton jersey it doesn't work quite as well so what i do is i fold it up once and then i use my seamstress gauge to measure so fold it up once i think this is a centimeter and a half and then i fold it again so what you would be doing is taking your piece of fabric, folding it over once, folding it over again, and then pinning and stitching along. I do it by eye, so I think about the measurement of this and then I will line the edge of the fabric up with the one centimeter mark or 1.5 mark, depending on how thick it is. And then I use my finger on the other side to just feel where the ridge is as it goes through the sewing machine and that works really well so the next question was on choosing knit fabrics and i think this is just going to be a long video <laughs> so this is also something that comes with experience but i've bought a few to show you and this person uh, specifically uh, looked at cardigans so this is a viscose jersey now one of my favorite types of jersey this is from stoff and steel and this is my cropped blackwood cardigan it's a lot more fluid it's finer it's stretchier and but it works well for the blackwood cardigan it's absolutely fine that will give you a lighter weight cardigan so that a viscose jersey you're looking this is viscose jersey too so you're looking at swooshier slightly stretchier slightly finer so a little bit thinner and it's going to stretch as you sew it it's not as stable as a cotton jersey but i will go into more detail about that when i do my individual fabric videos so that's a viscose jersey this one here is made out of french terry and it's a quite a fine french terry this i just got from my local fabric shop so french terry has the slight loop on the inside but you can see already how much more structured this is and this is what you want to use for like your winter cardigan or when it's a bit cooler in the autumn that's what i tend to use it for because it's a lot fluffier it's thicker to sew with but less stretchy more stable to work with i just realized i haven't overlocked my cuffs on this <laughs> okay so that's french terry now a fabric that I really like to use for cardigans is uh, jersey knit fabrics. Now you can't seem to find loads and loads of these about. I know that Sew Me Sunshine always has some and I have bought quite a few from Like So Amazing in the past. So a knit fabric looks 
as it suggests, like it's been knitted. So whereas on cottengers you get like the lines coming down of the ridges, on this it literally looks like it's been knitted. So more like a cardigan you would probably find in the shop, those kinds of things. And that is, they're slightly, they can be finer, they can be thicker. They're fine to sew, but they do start to un unravel slightly at the edge because they are knitted. So you will want to be thinking about how you finish those edges if you're using it, or definitely I would think so anyway. And that's is this one is slightly more drapey, it's a bit thinner. This is perfect for a summer cardigan, but I have got some that are thicker as well. So I might add that to a video to do the actual knitted fabrics and as well as sweater knit fabrics. I will go into a lot more detail about that in the individual fabrics videos, but it is about looking at the fabric, looking at the recommendations on the fab fabric websites and just getting to know the fabrics, which and just making things and trying things out, being a bit experimental with it. So the next question is about the fabric rolling once it's cut. Jersey rolls and it's something I kind of got used to I think. So this is a scrap from the project I'm doing for Lamazi at the moment. Now this is a really good weight high quality cotton jersey but it is still rolling and it's just a natural thing it stretches at the edges it slides, starts to roll and that's the selvage and it is rolled. I kind of work into it so I kind of I don't know I just kind of lean into the roll. So when I'm cutting something out, I spread my fingers out as I cut on one bit. So I have my fingers like this and then I cut with the other hand. And when I'm pinning things together, I just flatten it with my finger and pin together. There are some people that use kind of stabilizing tapes in on the edges or spray starch, but I like to not use extra things. I like to just kind of go with it. And so Jersey does roll. You're not doing anything wrong if it does. You just need to try and work with it. You might want to try ironing it. That does often help. And then you just kind of work with it. Pin it in place, pin the things together, flatten it out with your hands and it should work out. So I'm sorry if that's not a very in-depth uh, answer, but I just kind of lean into the roll. <laughs> so the next question is why might fabric get stuck where the needle is? Now often if you're using a finer jersey that will happen. It might happen with other fabrics but what you've got to think is the pressure of your foot's coming down on the fabric and it's dragging it forward and sometimes it does slip under. The way you can combat this is by using a little bit of tissue paper. So you can put a piece of tissue paper first, your fabric on top and then the tissue paper will drag along. You can also put a piece of tissue paper on top potentially if you're struggling with stretching or starting off. But yeah, a little bit of tissue paper underneath on the throat plate of the machine fabric on top, foot comes down and that will stop it from being sucked in because there's nowhere for it to be sucked in because the tissue paper is covering it. Uh, the other thing is, is you could start a little way in on the fabric. So say I've got my fabric like this, you could start sewing here and then reverse back and go forward again and you're much more likely to get a continuous line of stitching then rather than it being sucked down. So the next one is how to do a rolled hem with jersey. So what I've done is prepared a kind of sample here. Now I am going to add a neckband to this but I just wanted to show you. So I'm just going to readjust the camera and then show you how to do that. Okay so I've got some pins here and I've got my project. So I'm going to turn it inside out first of all. Now this is a t-shirt I've stitched the shoulder seams. Now normally I'd wait to do this till last but it's fine to do it now. So what I would do is start at the shoulder seam and I would make sure that this is pressed to one side and fold it over by whatever amount. Uh, let's go with a centimeter. I will now use my seamstress gauge but you can use a tape measure as well and I just use the centimeter bit to make sure that that's correct. Now I am going to do a double fold but I'm going to pin it round like this first. Now if you can try and get the seams lined up you might not be able to. Okay then you do the same on the other side to so folding it over. Now I am going to diagonal mine a little bit because I think that's going to work better. Check it and then pin it and then you work round the rest folding it 
measuring it until you've gone all the way around I'm not going to do the back because I can show you doing this then what you do is just fold it again so hold it with your thumb take out the pin use your other thumb to just secure it flip it over pin it again in place next bit I'm gripping it with my little fingers holding it with my thumbs I take the pin out I flip it over put the pin back in and for every point where you've put a pin you can do that and then once you've done the whole thing you can go around and just measure it check that it's right when you get to the shoulder seams it's quite tricky what you may want to do is um, flatten them out a little bit like I've got a little pointy bit there uh, which I could flatten out and my it's going slightly diagonal to the shoulder seam line but that's actually going to help with the curve of the back so you can just do it by eye as well quite often I've previously done it by eye and then just checked it before I've sewn it then once you've done this all the way around you just sew it on the sewing machine so I folded it over by a centimeter it'll be slightly over a centimeter because a centimeter is quite a small measurement and then I just line the edge of the fabric up with the centimeter mark on my machine and then simply sew round with a straight stitch so it is fairly easy my hands do this as in a habit now because I have done this for I think nearly 60 70 dresses so it does it as a habit it look, will look like that on the other side what you may want to do is change the position of your pins. I don't have a problem with them being on the wrong side and I just stop as I'm sewing and take them out. But that's how you do the rolled over. You can do that for a hem on the bottom. You can also do it for your neck band as well. So the next question is when you're cutting out pattern pieces, how do you stop the selvage from rolling? So I was doing this last night actually. I use my hand to unroll it as I cut if I'm cutting close to the selvage but I also use pattern weights and before I had pattern weights I used scissors to like weigh it down so what you want to do is lay out your fabric fold it over where necessary and then unroll each bit and put something on it to stop it from rolling back and if you do that kind of every 20 centimeters it'll keep it enough to be able to do it and then you just if you got get on a bit where it's slightly rolled up but there's plenty of fabric there you just unroll it splay your hand out like this and then cut and it will roll in again but once you, once it's sewn it'll be fine so that's just what i do the next question is on gathering jersey now this is a question that's a bit more tricky for me to answer i actually don't like sewing gathers so I will either have something that's flat at the front or I will sew in pleats. I much prefer pleats on my body shape than I do gathers. However, uh, I was just making the Georgie dress and they have suggested doing it as you would on a woven. I didn't follow that advice when I made my test version of the Georgie dress and I actually just hand tacked, kind of hand tacked it and then drew the, th the thread together because that's the, the only way I could think of doing it without stretching out the edge of the fabric. So I literally sewed a knot in the end of a piece of thread, used a hand needle within the se uh, seam allowance to stitch along, kind of even stitches throughout. And then I pinned it in the middle and then it kind of get, like gathered as I sewed. I don't necessarily know it's the way to do it, but if you're doing gathers in Jersey, what you don't want is it to really stretch out as you're doing that. So just be really mindful of that. So the next question is how do I store my jersey? Well, I actually store all my fabrics this way, but I store them rolled up in these Calax boxes for my uh, five by five Calax unit. I used to fold them and they were all stacked folded in the box, but when you took one out, they all came out and they all came unfolded. Whereas when you've got them rolled up like this, you can see them all really easily but you can also pull them out easily so even if I went for this one I mean yeah I'll have to use my hand to hold the rest in look they all stay in there and I've still got this one out and then even when I want to put it back in it's be a bit awkward I can put my arm in and then you just put you should <laughs> be able to just push it back in I mean that wasn't the most elegant thing in the world but you just push it back in so I've decided to store it like this 
So I kind of fold them in thirds. I think I fold it in half and in thirds, depending on the length of the fabric, and then roll it up, slot them all in, and I feel like that works really well. And I'm really happy with that method of storing my fabrics. Okay, the last question is smoothing fabric when prior to cutting, uh, especially if you're working on a carpet. Now, for years and years, I cut out in this room, which used to be my childhood bedroom, and I had carpet. And I actually really miss cutting out on carpet because of the grip. Now, I really like carpet as a way of gripping the bottom piece of fabric to help it stay in place. So, if you are sewn with a piece of jersey, I'm just gonna pick a, so can pick a smaller piece. Now, what you want to do is pick a detail on the pattern and fold it on that area where that detail is. So for example, if I chose that diamond, I wanna fold it halfway across the diamond like that. So I've got kind of half a diamond. I would then lie that down on the floor. And if you're struggling, literally if you pick it up at two points, it will naturally fall into place. Once you've done that, you just with a big swoop like this, place it onto the floor and then make sure it lines up. Your bottom piece should be nice and flat. You can flatten it out with your hands and then you just fold the other piece on top. Now I would show you how to do this, but I don't actually have any carpet in my house anymore. I've got wooden floors. So I can't actually show you how to position fabrics. But if you look back to some of the Sew With Me videos, you will see me doing some cutting out and I do in that show you how to do it. But that's my tip. Pick a detail on the pattern of the fabric if it isn't a patterned fabric, you'll have to look at the little lines to get it on grain, to get it on grain. But I pick a, piece, a section of the fabric, widen my arms to kind of further points where that is, and then go. Do a bit of shake with the fabric and it should automatically fall into the correct position. And then you just need to lay it onto the floor or onto your table or whatever you're doing. But just remember, everything comes with experience. And if you do want any other tips, then please feel free to message me or comment below. I really hope you enjoyed this video. It's a slightly different one for me. And I hope that you maybe learnt something or just can see things with a little bit more clarity if you did ask a question. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please press the thumbs up and subscribe if you want to hear more from me. Goodbye.